Hello everyone. I welcome to this uh, new video series on introduction to R programming. This is session one of uh, introduction to R programming. About me, this is uh, Balu here from SP Tech Bangalore. I have over 20 years of experience in uh, teaching various colleges and corporates across India on various technologies. I am also a practicing software engineer and a data scientist. Now coming to the history of R. What exactly is R? See before you actually learn any programming language, you need to know its history. First of all, R is a programming language. We know what a programming language is. It helps you to develop programs. There are so many programming languages which we have studied in the past and we are also studying now like C, C++, Java. And one such programming language is also R. Like any other programming language, R also has emerged out of another programming language. Just like how you had C programming language emerging from BCPL, R emerged from a programming language called as S. So S was a programming language which was very predominant in the year 1970 and it was used by AT&T Bell Laboratories. And this S was taken and further refined and they came out with a programming language called as an R. And this was actually done by two scientists who were good statisticians as well. And they were Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman. And they did extensive research on S language and they brought in some modifications and they called it as R in the University of the Auckland in the year 1991. So it took around 10 years or probably 9 years I would say for them to come out with the first implementation of R uh, which was versioned as 1.0 and was released in the year 2000. R is now a programming language which can be used both for procedural oriented programming as well as object oriented programming. So this is about a brief history of R language. Now coming to what exactly is R? So we all know now that R is a programming language. Now every programming language will have a purpose. For example, you use Java for a certain purpose, you use C programming language for a certain purpose. Now similarly, R programming language is basically used for statistical computing. It is used for data analytics and it is used for scientific research. Now these are the three wide areas where we use R. Now we put all these areas together and we can call it as a data science. So R is predominantly used for data science platform. Now what is statistical computing? Statistical computing is basically making use of statistics in order to derive a value for data. You will understand what is statistics and what are the different types of statistics in the future course of my session. And R is also used for data analytics. That means you are going to analyze the data which helps you to make some good business decisions and R is also used for scientific research. Now coming to some of the major companies which use R. So you have some big names here like Google, Facebook, Bank of America. So these are some of the major companies which make use of R but they are not limited to only these major companies. There are so many companies today which make use of R in their varied segments. So now we have understood what is R and how R came into existence. Now let us, you know, throw some light on what are the features of R. Why is R so important today? First of all, R is free and open source. So today you don't have to pay anything in order to, if you want to work on R programming language, you just have to go to a website and download R and start working on it. So it comes on a general public license, so you don't have to pay anything. So it's free of use. Anybody can use R at their own and they may not pay even a penny for using that particular R. It's an interpreter because since it's an interpreter, coding becomes much more easier. We all know what an interpreter is. Interpreter is nothing but a translator which basically converts your high level language into a machine level language. And one of the major important feature of R is 
it associates with different databases like Microsoft Access, MySQL, Oracle, etc. So this is one of the main features of R, its support or its functionality in associating with various and the varied type of database management systems. And more importantly, R has got extensive set of libraries. Probably I would say today it would have more than 10,000 libraries which are exclusively used for data science and machine learning. So these are some of the main features of R programming language. Now why do we need to learn R? What is the need of a student or somebody to learn R? First of all, it is platform independent. That means it can work on any operating system and we can, you know, basically write a code and I migrate it to any operating system. Free installation, we all know this. You don't have to pay anything to download and install R. It is the hottest trend today. Suppose if you look at the actual trend in terms of the popularity in the programming languages, R has got a good ranking today. And it is supported by vast community. There are so many people who are actually contributing to R in terms of libraries and packages. And it will integrate with other languages. Now R can be used to combine with other programming languages like C, C++, Java and we can write a comprehensive code out of it. And it is used almost in any industry. R is not only limited only to a certain set of industry. Today R is used in e-commerce industry. Today R is used in academics. Today R is used in hospitality industry. So name an industry basically we have an R implementation there. So these are some of the reasons like why we need to learn R and why R has grown into this much popularity as of today. Now when you look at the number of R packages ever published on CRAN, now CRAN stands for uh, Comprehension or Comprehensive R Archive Network. Now in the year 1998, you can see that the number of packages were very less. Probably it was almost minimal. So as the years passed away in the year 2000 2002 slowly the number of packages started improvising and say by 2018 the number of packages have reached to 11,000 and in 2022 I think the number of packages would have reached more than 15,000 as of today so the versatility of a programming language depends upon how many packages it has got or how many library functionalities it has got. So today R has got multiple number of library functionalities. That means it has got library functionalities into many, many, many specific domains where we can improvise on that and also we can import that and start using it in our programming logic or we can use it in order to develop advanced software systems using R. So this is a simple illustration of the curve which shows a peak in terms of you know how many libraries have been incorporated over given period of time since R was uh, you know R came into existence. So now we know that R is very popular in nature because of the versatility of R because of the diversified packages it has got in R. Now coming to the applications of R, where do we use R? R is predominantly used in social media. So in social media we have you know two things like we have something called as you know behavior analysis and sentimental analysis. So what is this behavior analysis? We can track the behavior of a customer. For example, you have a particular website. You have launched a particular website and I want to know how does a customer behave on your website? What are the different areas of your website where the customer frequently visits? Now I can trace this and I can come to know which are the areas where your customers visit the most and which are the areas where your customers visit the less. So based upon that I can fine tune those areas which they visit the less so that I can improvise on the content so that we give more user interactive experience. So that is called as you know behavior analysis. Similarly you have something called as sentimental analysis. So what is sentiment analysis? Now we know that every website today or every service you offer would have a feedback form. Now the people are you know free to write the feedback on the services you offer are the reviews whatever you call so now based upon the review I can find out what the customer is feeling about or what the group of customers is feeling about or we can say what is the general opinion on your service 
so i can say i can combine all the feedbacks together and i can make an kind of an intelligence report and say okay the customer satisfaction level is good so this is called as you know sentimental analysis so using r we can create this kind of sentimental analysis and behavior analysis which is predominantly used in social media it is also used in it for business intelligence very important today we use business intelligence to take decisions today companies rely on data because you know data is money today so that means earlier 10 years back we did not pay much importance to data but today you know people have started paying more importance to data and we don't want to waste this data at any given point of time so data is generated in various forms so we have huge amount of data today so we collect all those data and we derive some intelligence out of it now using this intelligence the companies can take right decisions at the right time and we also use for software development we can like derive some small 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 application softwares using r and r is also used in finance where we can use it for you know stock market modeling i can basically use something like time series analysis or in or some kind of an analysis model which can actually predict what will be the share price in the next 2 3 years or in the next 2 3 months depending upon the previous stock prices or the share prices so we can make use of r programming language for making predictions using some mathematical modeling so we will talk about this and when we are actually looking into the future sessions of r and we can also use it for fraud detection that is one more area which is having an very good implementation of r as far as finance is concerned and if you look at the government as one of the uh, specific domain we can use r in weather forecasting so r is very much used in weather forecasting under government organizations so these are some of the you know main applications of r now coming to the popularity of the programming languages where and all you know uh, r is actually fitting in into the stack of all the programming languages now this is a very important extract which i have removed from a website called pypl pypl stands for popularity of programming language where you have a popularity index that popularity index is nothing but the rank now you can see that as of today that is 2022 when I, in this particular year python has the highest popularity language and r is in position number 7 so it's quite a popular language even as of today so these are some of this is also one of the reason why you need to learn r so in this particular session you have actually understood what is r and how r came into existence uh, what is a brief history about r and why do we need to learn r what are the various applications of r and we also saw what is the popularity programming language of r in terms of the popularity index so thank you so much for watching this particular session uh, please don't forget to hit on the notification bell and subscribe for my channel i will see you in my next session in this introductory course on introduction to r programming till then take care bye bye